we really need the forests for the water, for the catchments of the rivers, for the biodiversity. Ruchi Badola is a professor and scientist at the Wildlife Institute of India in Dehradun. She works with the Department of Eco-Development Planning and Participatory Management. Ruchi specializes in community participation in biodiversity conservation, ecological economics, assessment of ecosystem services, sustainable livelihood and gender issues when it comes to conservation. She leads the Pravasi Ganga Prahari, which is a platform for global citizens to contribute towards Ganga cleanliness and rejuvenation under the National Mission for Clean Ganga Vision. Let us dive deep into this conversation with Ruchi on all things forest and conservation. Give us a brief overview on the importance of forest conservation in our lives. I think uh, everybody knows the importance of forest, in fact. And in the recent times, uh, you know, it's been brought home much closer how important forests are, forests and natural resources are to our survival. You know, since the time probably immemorial times, people have lived in forests and dependent on forests. And as the so-called development uh, happened, people's dependence on forest maybe changed its uh, system, you know, but it was always there. And even today, Maybe we, you and me, people like us who live in urban areas may not depend on the forest to fetch firewood or to get grass or to get fodder, which over, uh, you know, almost 70% of the people in our country are doing. But we really need the forest for the water, for the catchments of the rivers, for the biodiversity, you know, for the all the eco ecosystem services that it provides to us, the good health, the water security, the food security, pollination services, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle and so on. So I really don't need to sort of elaborate on that. But, you know, uh, it is the basis for survival of humanity. Let us hear about the uniqueness of biodiversity in Indian forests. The most unique part of our country is that we are located at the junction of three biogeographic realms. And therefore, we have influences from all we, the Indo, the Eurasian, the Indo-Malayan and the Afrotropical. So we have the species, the rep flora, fauna, the representations of all these realms. And when they get together, they create one of the most diverse regions of the world in a way. Uh, you are aware that we have two biodiversity hotspots in our country, the northeast of India, the Western Ghats. And the very interesting part is that in our country, uh, we have 10 biogeographic zones right from the Trans Himalayas to the Himalayas to the Gangetic Plains to the coasts. So from the Trans Himalayas to the coasts, you can imagine the whole range of biodiversity that we have. Biodiversity both floral and faunal. What is the role of Wildlife Institute of India when it comes to conservation? So the Wildlife Institute of India is a premier institution of this country under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. And our mandate is a threefold to conduct research on all aspects of wildlife and biodiversity conservation. Secondly, to create a, you know, a, so it's, it's in fact fourfold, to train in service forest officers who are the custodians of natural resources. Uh, and these forest officers not necessarily can be from India, they can be from the neighboring countries. In fact, Wildlife Institute of India has been the premier institution uh, in the surrounding countries also for training their protected area managers. For example, countries like Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh, we've all trained, in fact, most of their protected area managers here. Secondly, uh, in terms of uh, academics, so we are in the, we do, and we are in the process of creating a very, very, uh, you know, a very uh, highly trained and motivated cadre of professional wildlife conservationists through our masters and PhD programs. So we have these students coming in for masters in wildlife conservation or masters in heritage management, and uh, they are the you know the future torchbearers of biodiversity conservation. And fourthly, we also advise the central and state governments, the honourable courts, the National Green Tribunal, etc., on all matters related to biodiversity and wildlife. What do you feel about citizen participation 
when it comes to conservation efforts i think it's a very good idea because you know uh, for myself i can just share a small experience because when i was asked to work on uh, engaging communities in ganga conservation and river conservation when i started out in the field i realized that it's a huge thing you know from where to start and whom to engage and whom not to engage and so i started working initially uh, you know with people who were very motivated and uh, started doing a lot of training and awareness activities for them and then i also realized that there are people who want to do something for conservation whether it is rivers or forest or species or anything but what they need at times is a platform and they also need uh, to be shown how you can do it and that is what we saw in the matter of ganga river because ganga as you know is much beyond a river for people in the country and abroad and uh, that's why we created this whole cadre known as ganga preheris or guardians of the ganga guardians of the rivers now we call them so anybody who is committed who is passionate about doing anything for conserving rivers and wetlands can become a ganga prahari and they can become and there are different versions of being a ganga prahari if they want to work on ground they become a ganga prahari i am a ganga prahari if they want to become uh, advised ganga praheris do trainings or awareness or motivation they can become ganga prahari mentors if they are not in the country and they want to you know do something from abroad they are pravasi ganga praheris and for schools and school children we've started a program known as bal ganga praheris so so the only thing in this is that it is a platform which is totally managed scientifically and it's updated every day it's a database which is updated every day and constantly we are in touch with these people we build up their capacities they volunteer programs sometimes we provide them backstopping so it is like a multiplier effect because when they start working in their community other agencies start approaching them other departments approach them we in, we have not given them any money to be a ganga prahari what we have give, invested in is creating the human resource through skill enhancement capacity building awareness programs so what happens is we increase their employability we increase their visibility and the visibility of the ideals and ethos that they carry within them and the motivation so it that's like creating a ripple effect in the society and which has you know created an impact but registered ganga prahris today are not more than 4000 because it's not a number game it's you know like each ganga prahri is like a diamond which is shining there and it has to spread its own light so uh, that's what i'm saying if you are creating this uh, one uh, you know guardians of forest i wish you all the best and i think there are huge lessons which you can take from here and you give them any name you know they could be one rakshaks they could be one praheris anything but constant engagement is very important with them and this platform is very important what do you think about the relationship between communities livelihood and conservation communities is, and livelihoods is extremely important because conservation doesn't happen on an empty stomach very important and livelihood is the prime driving force for people anybody and particularly the communities who depend on natural resources are often the poorest and the most marginalized communities of society so if we really want this part is their participation to sustain and actually to create an impact and have better conservation then we cannot leave aside their livelihoods you know for example recognizing this our honorable prime minister has given the concept of arth ganga that arth ganga is to ensure that local people's livelihoods and incomes are enhanced through the locally available resources and in a manner which does not hamper the natural resource base and that is the concept which we have taken up in the ganga basin as jalaj which links people and forest in a symbiotic relationship in which people get their livelihood from a better conserved rivers and wetlands rather than by their exploitation through better conservation they get better livelihoods healthier livelihoods so that is the whole concept on which we are working now what are your views on sustainability and forest in a larger in a larger context it is also a story of you know the people who live next to forest who live in forest who depend on forest they are paying the cost for conservation by an opportunity cost of conservation by you know uh, foregoing their use which traditionally or for their livelihoods they were using so society we all owe them we owe them this service which they are providing us so it cannot be a forced thing 
it has to be voluntary and it can only become voluntary when it becomes a when we recognize that what they are doing is a service and this whole concept of payment for ecosystem services has to be implemented in that spirit we are not giving doles in the name of government programs or grants and all that is no, that will not create good conservation good conservation will be created through professionalism when we treat these people these people who live on the vicinity of forest as professionals we train them we motivate them and we show them that if you are able to conserve this forest if you are able to conserve this species that is your service which you are giving to this country which you are giving to this society for which you will be paid like any other service if we give them that respect if we give them that respect uh, that return then only conservation through community participation can be a success and conservation can be a reality otherwise it will be as it is what we are doing how do you see the role of women in conservation they are the you know the the foundations of society and particularly the the basic unit of society a home you know whatever happens the power of women in the home cannot be undermined and i beg to differ from people who say that women need support women need this women need that women don't need anything they are very strong they just need to be recognized for their strength so far we have worked on the weakness of women we just need to work on their strength and this is what we have done in the ganga pehri program and i am very glad to share with you that uh, over 50% of the ganga preheries today are women and this i am talking about the areas regions of up bihar the backward areas where women never came out today these women are at the forefront of livelihoods they are at the forefront of conservation efforts how because we started talking to them on matters that mattered them to them the most the well being of their household the well being of their children the security of future of their you know families and then we may, and you know the only thing is to provide them a a comfortable and safe environment which matches with their reproductive roles so their productive and reproductive roles cannot be you know cannot be in conflict which they often are because the kind of opportunities we create for women are such that their both these roles are often in conflict what we need to create is opportunities where both these roles are complementary and then you see how the you know the movements the societies how they move forward in a very creative way finally what will be your message for our audience what i would say is that this is the wealth this is the career and this is the future of humanity so i think and i will tell you i am an economist working in conservation and when i look at these bright young students i really wish if more and more brighter and brightest people come into this field of conservation money actually i always say money does and will grow on trees actually that is where the money is that is where the wealth is that is where the happiness and health and future is thank you